Today for the top rated limited series Monsters, the Lyle and Eric Menendez story. Uh, following the massive success of Dahmer, Ryan Murphy at Ian Brand's true crime anthology series returns, chronicling the case of the real life brothers who were convicted in 1996 for the murders of their parents, Jose and Mary Louise Kitty Menendez. Uh, please join me in today welcoming makeup head of department, Miho Suzuki. <laughs> Please welcome Ryan Murphy. Thank you so much for being here. I'm afraid we're out of time now. <laughs> After those intros and, and applause, but uh, we'll, we'll persevere. Uh, thank you so much for being here. Congratulations on, on a wonderful series. Um, I want to start with Ryan, obviously, because I mean, this show has been a huge commercial success, critical success. Um, but there's something more to it, which is that you might have actually affected lives with, with this production. Um, I believe they're rehearing, talking about rehearing Lyle and Eric's case. I mean, that's, look, really good reviews are nice, but that's got to be better than, like, any great review. To know that you've actually maybe made a difference in our justice system. Yeah, it's a, it's a bit, it's a, I can't say I was unsurprised. Um, because when we finished shooting it and I saw the episodes, um, I sort of, thought they were incredibly powerful and on several different points of view. And that was the, always the purpose of the show, was to show different complicated points of view. But I thought really what it did about um, raising and, and asking questions about sexual abuse was very, very powerful. And I think, um, you know, there's a, love it or, or not, there's a movement with young people who want to talk about that in a way that wasn't available in 1989. So whether you believe them or not is kind of beside the point. What it did, I think, which is why I wanted to make it, was to launch a conversation about that topic. And people were really drawn to it, and a lot of people got involved and made their opinions known after they watched the show, you know, which was very, very interesting. You know, Kim Kardashian um, called me a month before the show came out and asked to see it, and I said, sure, she's a friend, and she, is somebody who's very into um, prison reform, and she instantly got involved, and the DA and the governor's office were flooded with a lot of um, reactions from people who had big opinions about the show. So I do think um, it led to something interesting, and, and more important to me, you know, when you make something whether people love it or hate it is behind, beside the point, but does it launch a conversation about yeah. something? And I think the show definitely did that in a way that Ian and I were very proud of, of that. Absolutely. Um, uh, I, I want to start with this amazing cast because the, the, Menendez, the Menendez brothers have you know, sort of been in the public eye for, I guess, the last 35 years. Um, I'm curious, what did you know or think you knew about this story when you came to the project, and, and what drew you to your roles? We'll go ahead and start with you. Well, first, I just am admiring all this. Yes, the I know, it's beautiful. Here. And the colors change, I just realized. It was oh, white in here earlier. I love colors. <laughs> um, I... I grew up in Woodland Hills in, in Calabasas, which is where the family first moved to when they moved to California. Yay. And so I found out, um, I, I, I just, I heard about it. Um, so I had known, I had known a lot about it and I'd watched some of the trial footage and testimony and, um. Wait, you would have been like two years old. Yeah, no, 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 I just. Oh, you mean I, back in, oh, I don't, yeah, yeah, you know, when I, live. Okay. Yeah, when I was in high school and when I was older, yeah, no, um. 
So yeah, and I was always just fascinated by it and moved by their stories and their testimony. And um, it's just a very interesting and fascinating story. Mm -hmm. And for you? I wasn't familiar with the story until I got the audition. And then um, once I caught that, I, you know, you're trying to do an expedited research process, right? So you're trying to learn as much as you can as fast as possible so that you don't make a fool of yourself in the room once you audition for Ryan Murphy. Um, <laughs> but yeah, it, it was it was an ongoing journey in terms of um, what we were able to learn and then uh, marrying that with the scripts that uh, were written for us. Um, I just, but I just want to pause before we get to the other actors because um, this is such a great cast of like faces we recognize, but also newer faces. Um, and I want to ask your casting director as well: How many people did you have to see in order to find your Eric and your Lyle? Well, Tiffany Young is one of her names. We talked a lot about it, and you know, um, it was funny when when we were starting this process. I always knew that I wanted. Javier Bardem and Chloe and Nathan Lane. I've worked with three of them long for a long time. So when you go into a project, you're like you plant your tent poles, right? And we we did that. And then Tiffany and I had a long conversation about I think the best way to go about this show is to find people that people really are sort of new people, fresh voices, and that's what we wanted with Lyle and Eric. So. Tiffany worked particularly hard for like I believe six months something like that just constant auditioning and she should talk about her process but I will say that um, it was like we called it like the Scarlett O'Hara search like it just went on and on and on and it's that thing like you know when you fall in love you're like no 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 and then suddenly you hit their the video their audition video and I just instantly felt yes like those are our mm -hmm guys like they they are the ones and in a process like this you have to have a lot of approvals and a lot of people weigh in and usually there's a very you know you, when you do network and studio auditions you usually bring five or six people per part and you bring them in and you see them all and then there's a conversation but I didn't want to do that because I sort of felt like if I don't have these two guys, then I just don't want to make it. So for the final comeback, they showed up and it was only them. Wow. And they were sort of shocked, like just sitting in a room <laughs> looking around. And I just was open and I said, I believe in you and I think your work is amazing. And they, they auditioned several times. So I said, you know, this is, I believe in you and I don't want you to feel that you have any competition because for me and Tiffany and you don't. Yeah. So we just brought them into a room and they met each other, I think, the first time and they did three or four scenes together and that was it. And we sent in our audition and I believe I called them a couple hours later and said, Netflix saw it and loves you when you have the part. So it was it was it felt very special. And Tiffany you should talk Yes, about. and Tiffany, you didn't just have to find Scarlett O'Hara, you had to find two Scarlett O'Hara's. <laughs> Yes, that was, um, and also we had scripts, so it was really clear what we needed on the talent department, right? Not just that these are based on real people and how they look, but like the talent. So we reached out to conservatories and, um, you know, the theater scene, as well as, of course, agents, managers, and um, an open call, you know, so we really tried to cover the gamut, and it doesn't surprise me we ended up with two brilliant, trained, professional actors who came in and took these parts, claimed them. All right, give me a number. Are we talking, you saw 100 people, 200? I think it was way Five more than million. That. I think it was, <laughs> it was approximately 1.275 million. <laughs> but also for our audition, when their final audition wasn't even an audition, it was like yeah. a coronation. You know, we gave them one, each of them had to do one of the most difficult scenes that they would have over mm. the run of the series as part of their audition. So it was it was just very rewarding about how it worked. And then, you know, also in the casting process for me and for Tiffany, you know, there were just amazing, tremendous surprises like Ari's audition, you know, for Leslie and how she was just so spectacular and was so that person mm. that it was like, okay, done. It, 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 the casting process is so thrilling and uh, I'd known her work and I'd always wanted to work with her and 
so I was thrilled I finally got to. It's like, it, it's a very, um, I always cast things in different ways, you know, but it, this was a really fun thing to do, and I'm glad that Tiffany and I saw it the same way. And uh, going back to the actors, Javier, correct me if I'm wrong, but I think this is your first series role. Is that correct? Yeah. Uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, there we go. Uh, yeah, thank you. Um, thank God I didn't do any audition for this. <laughs> I've never been hired. I mean, I'm so bad in auditions. I hear you, all the process. It's amazing uh, what an actor has to go through in order to get a job. How hard it is to be able to sustain the creativity when the pressure is so on. In the case of you guys, knowing that it could be a life changer experience mm -hmm. as it is. No? And, uh, and even though being able to give the very best of yourselves, I mean, it's a, it's a, it always amazed me the fact that an actor can really perform yeah. in a in a in an audition. I've done some, but I mean, thank, at I some thank, point. thank yeah, thank God I didn't do for this case. Um, what was the question? Oh, what did you know? <laughs> what did you know about this case, or, or sort of think? Nothing. I live in Spain. I don't know anything about it. <laughs> <laughs> I only know about tapas and, and pie. And, uh, <laughs> and, but I know Ryan. We, we were in Bali together, Eat, Pray, Love, yeah, and uh, and uh, he called me and I said, yeah, for sure, and then I read it and I said, fuck, <laughs> Jose Menendez, what a guy, okay, <laughs> but I always felt protected, safe in his hands, and one thing that I know for sure is that, I mean, he's an amazing artist, and he always does this thorough, thorough research on everything he does, yeah. And he surrounds himself with the very best that you can find on the on, on, on this industry. So creatively speaking, no doubt, it was more about, okay, how are we going to uh, talk about these very delicate issues? And we sat down and he expressed to me what he was, how he considered it was the best way to show it and not show it. And I loved it and I went full into, into the process. Mm -hmm. Wow. Um, and Chloe, for you, you've obviously worked with Ryan before, so I don't know if it's just an immediate yes when you see his name come up. Um, it was an immediate yes. Yes, he called. He kind of talked to me a bit about, you know, the series and what he wanted to say with the series. And I said yes. And then I read the script and I had the same reaction as Javier. I was like, fuck, can we do this? Can we show this? Do we want to? Like, I was, I was like, has Javier read, uh, have you ever read these? And I think I called you back and was like, how are we gonna do this? You're like, it's implied. I was like, well, that's pretty heavily implied. <laughs> um, and then also like, you know, knowing that I was going to have to play different versions of this woman yeah. um, was very exciting to me, very challenging as an actor, because normally you're searching for this one truth and you're playing the truth of this character and here I'm playing different interpretations of her and I thought that was going to be a really exciting kind of challenge. I've never had the opportunity to do that before. And I think also to show a mother that is, you know, struggling in the way that this woman did, I think you rarely see that on screen. And um, I, I know a lot of, you know, mothers, personally friends that are mothers and that, that, you know, are challenged by it and their relationships with their kids. And I thought that was just something that people don't really talk about. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, there was a lot there to mine. Uh, you mentioned Nicholas and, and Cooper. You you met at sort of the, he calls it a coronation, which I love more than the audition. When did the four of you meet? Because this family dynamic it really feels lived in for all the good and bad that entails. We had a a f rehearsal in the den for the the scene, the, the murder scene, and yeah, they just they walked yeah. in and we hugged and Ryan came and. We all talked about what, what we wanted to do, and um, yeah, and then we just started rehearsing. So you hugged and then you shot that? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> no, we rehearsed for like two days, then we shot that sequence okay. over four days, and I mean, I have to say just to Ryan, not to be kiss ass, but like he was so present and available for all of us all the time, and I really respect that um, just because he's such a busy man, and like all the writers and the directors would call us, give us their numbers, like every, like it was so much open dialogue 
and everybody felt like very safe and very heard and I found that very refreshing because I, I hadn't really experienced, I've done a lot of television, I was a seasoned professional, um, <laughs> but I hadn't had that kind of access before, that kind of the stream of communication. I thought that was really an incredible thing that, that they provided us all with. And Nathan, for you, um, you know, you're you're not only playing a real person, but someone who I think a lot of people remember pretty vividly. Do you? What did you know, or did, you know, think you knew about Dominic Dunn in this story? And, and do you feel an extra pressure because it is a real person? Um, I uh, I knew a little about Dominic. I actually I once got a note from him when I was doing a play on Broadway, and he had been there to see it and. He just thanked me for uh, giving him such an entertaining evening. Uh, Sorry, what show I'm dying to know? Uh, I have no idea. <laughs> it's a long time ago. But I remember getting a note from Dominic Dunn. <clears throat> so maybe that was a sign, an omen. Um, uh, yeah, so I, I knew that he wrote for Vanity Fair. <clears throat> and then... Um, uh, just started doing research as as you do, and and uh, I talked to his son Griffin, who was uh, extremely helpful and gracious, and uh, and he he had just finished writing this uh, book, The Friday Afternoon Club, his memoir of his childhood, and and I so I got an advanced copy of that, and that was very helpful, wow. and and um, and certainly looking at there's a lot of video of him being interviewed, yeah. but. <clears throat> I remember saying, uh, Griffin, there had been another book about Dominic and that he wasn't happy with. And I said, well, how would you like to see your father portrayed? And he said, I just want people to know that that trial, the trial of John Sweeney who murdered his daughter and how it changed his life forever, personally and professionally, and, and which is why he became such a passionate advocate for victims. And, mm. and so when I got the, I was sent the first four scripts and I thought, well, I, I feel like that's a huge arc for this character and they really captured that. I mean, I, the writing was just exceptional. So uh, that's, that's a big part of it. But the writing is that good. I mean, Don McDonough in and of himself is, is such a fascinating figure, but I, I love that you took the time to sort of dedicate um, some of the story to his backstory, which obviously affected him so deeply and his work. Yeah, the interesting thing about the monster show is that it, it, it asks the question, you know, who is the monster? How are monsters, are they made, are they born? And in this season in particular, there's many different type, types of monsters, and I thought, you know, Dominique's killer and what he did to her and what he did to her family, that was a different sort of vein we could talk about and how monstrous behavior, behaviors really tear apart families. The, the family was always at the center of what we were trying to write about this season. So yeah, it's kind of, you know, interesting you know, we're working, we just two days ago started working on um, season three, which is about Ed Gein, and there's many different monsters in society in that story as well. So that's the fascinating thing to write to about cultural um, monstrosities, I think. Um, Ari, uh, I have such vivid memories of, of the first trial and of Leslie. Um, she had such a specific look and sound and, and feel. Um, you know, how much do you feel, you know, behold, you don't want to do an imitation, but like you very much capture her spirit. You sort of channel that, but you also do look and sound like her. How important was it to you to, to have both those things? Um, well, I, it's funny to hear I look and sound like her. I'm like, in this. Thanks, thanks for these <laughs> wonderful <laughs> artists. Oh, yeah. Um, no, I mean, I, she's so, her look is so iconic. Her voice is so iconic. She's got, you know, she's really got a thing. And um, so, yeah, I, I watched and watched and read and read. And, you know, I think what was so extraordinary about these scripts and the writing, the first, Thing I ever read, and and really the the only things I read before I auditioned were um, two scenes. It was the scene when you first meet her at the adoption agency, and the first time she meets Eric, and 
Ryan and Ian and all the writers are so extraordinary. And to see that this is how they were introducing her talking about adopting a child and um, what happens when kids don't get the love that they need. It was this um, total other insight and inside into her that was another level besides her sort of, you know, brassy nuclear strength pain in the ass, I think as the LA Times once called her. Um, so I just really wanted to honor that, uh, the love that I think she had and, and the passion and, and fairness